Welcome back everyone and it's time to go BALLS D! And today we are covering the finale of Deku vs Lady Nagan, where we get a better understanding of Deku's fifth quirk from the third one for all holder and the message Lady Nagan's character brings to the overall story. Which, of course, it's regarding why Deku will be perceived as the number one greatest hero in the world due to his selfless nature and idealism. We see this nature that Deku propagates within chapter 315 to help portray the message that heroes should always reach out and give a helping hand to those that could be saved and not too far gone. One could argue that this idealism is quite naive, so the story is trying to build up Deku's maturity in a manner where he has to question his own morality that all might help shape in the first place in his childhood. In chapter 314, we already saw this in fruition when Deku believes the world is painted grey rather than simply right or wrong. A flashback is given regarding the rippling effect Deku's idea and nature has, with Overhaul mentioning that he's the one that ruined his plan due to being a victim of Hero Syndrome, where Lady Nagant says that it almost feels like destiny that they all meet. As we learned from chapter 315 and last week, Lady Nagant was framed for being called a hero killer by the safety commission, where publicly it was likely spread by them for their own agenda due to the knowledge she possessed and the missions and atrocities she completed for them. These missions involved high stakes that were not heroic at all. They were grey in nature just as Deku claims, where people were being assassinated based upon their intel with no jury, no judge, no trial. Lady Nagant decided to kill the commissioner in self defence because she wanted to leave due to their corruption and not believing in her purpose as a hero the way they saw it. They threatened her that if she did not obey all their orders like a dog, they would expose her and assassinate her character or even take her out. This result in Lady Nagan going to prison, but the story makes sure to let us know that she is still a hero at heart. Now you have to think about this, look back at chapter 297, Lady Nagan saved Overhaul because she wanted to, as he was in trouble whilst the world was going up in flames. She didn't know what was going on or what the situation was, but decided to be selfless and saved his life. Lady Nagan had no reason to save Overhaul. We learned in chapter 314 in the flashback that it was all for one that gave her the mission to take out Deku. It is likely that Lady Nagant must have known Overhaul through the safety commission having intel on him and his past. This is because she stated to All For One that Overhaul is a victim of pro hero society just like her, meaning that she of course knows about his twisted past of suffering in his childhood and eventually being adopted by the mafia. Where else would she have gotten this intel? Therefore this would have made her feel sympathy and understanding for the problems that the commission she worked for caused. Due to this intel, this would have allowed Lady Nagant to feel sympathy and understanding for the problems that the commission she worked for caused. It could be possible that Lady Nagant is the one that was forced by the Safety Hero Commission to kill Overhaul's parents which led to him being an orphan and then being adopted by the Mafia in the first place. She must have a role to play for Overhaul to become who he is. Someone that became abusive to Eddie and created the quirk destroying bullets out of the trauma he went through. In chapter 315, we see Overhaul state that he doesn't care about any old grudges, but it's because he lost everything, and we see Lady Nagant have sympathy, almost feeling responsible. He remembers the boss and wants to apologize to him. His adoptive father and the gang boss told Overhaul that he should use his powers for helping society, but he never listened and changed as he grew up. The irony is that this change is what caused Overhaul to be in despair right now, with Shigaraki taking away his arms and quirk. Being the king of the underworld was a terrible dream to have, since it will only bring your own demise to yourself and those you love. None of this would have happened if he listened to his father, which gives an opportunity for him to self reflect and Deku to be the helping hand to make Overhaul a good person and reform, just like his father wished for him to be originally where he asked him to be a good person whilst raising him. Therefore this insinuates and foreshadows the idea that Overhaul will help Deku in the 
war against All for One. In chapter 314, we saw Lady Nagant shoot towards Overhaul, attempting to kill him. She wanted to test Deku's resolve and ideology to prove his naivety, but at the same time, wanting to make him overthink. Nagant felt just like most heroes, Deku would need time to think before he decides to save Overhaul. Or if Deku was a person to ignore the safety of criminals, he would still hesitate before letting a life be taken. Either way, this hesitation would give Nagant the chance to have a clean shot on Deku. However, as we have witnessed throughout the story, Deku always instinctively prioritizes to save a person. He did this with Bakugo, Ida and Eddie. It's the whole reason why All Might decided to choose him in the first place to receive one for all. Therefore, Deku preemptively reacts to save him. Deku activates the third user's quirk, Fajin, explaining how he can release stored up kinetic energy, giving him an extreme boost in explosive power. Now a lot of you guys were saying, what's the difference between this quirk and one for all's base stockpiling quirk of power? Like didn't All Might already have this explosive power? Well, yes. But the thing is, the type of power this stockpiling quirk gives has a massive toll on the body. Whereas Fajin, Fajin is just the use of built up kinetic energy being released in a fast motion. This doesn't just have less toll but also gives a boost in explosiveness past power which is extremely handy when Deku's body is yet to be capable of utilizing 100% one for all. In effect Deku can create an equivalent output to 100% one for all which is exactly what Deku does. He was able to achieve a pseudo 100% by utilizing utilizing black whip to rotate around the buildings creating a centrifugal force adding to his 45% one for all on top of having the built up kinetic energy from his forging quirk like talk about big brain and how OP Deku has become Bruh. this outburst of explosive force sent Deku flying towards overhaul quicker than a freaking bullet fam to give some perspective a normal sniper bullet travels around 1700 miles per hour which means Deku went even even faster to save Overhaul in time. To help him do this, Deku imitates All Might's form when he is seen flying, further increasing Deku's acceleration. Deku mimicking All Might is not only practical but also symbolic, as even in Lady Nagant's era, All Might was the truest hero and the symbol to look up to. After saving Overhaul, he tells him that they aren't done with him yet. The third one for all holder highlights how fast Deku is learning. As before, Deku was switching between his quirks, using them in rapid succession and as a result his processing wasn't able to keep up. Now in the last chapter, we learned that Deku was advised by Endeavor on how to perform multiple actions at once. So the fight is trying to insinuate the idea that Deku has already mastered 4 out of the 6 quirks to use at the same time. At least 3 to 4. Bruh, you know how freaking OP that is? Who can compete with Deku now? Except Shigaraki and all for one. All the other characters are irrelevant in front of this guy now he's so OP. Deku using his big brain was able to understand exactly how much he can do at the same time by restricting the amount of quirk he uses. The third even points out that he still has another leg worth of Far Jin, meaning he can still use this ability once more. But at this point Nagant gets caught off guard and Deku instantly does 100% pseudo Manchester smash destroying Lady Nagant's rifle arm. Even before she can react, Lady Nagant goes into a mental suspension as she is bewildered that Deku had zero hesitation to act like a true hero, thus strengthening the ideals Deku was spouting earlier. He isn't just talking, he puts actions to his words. He embodies what it means and is willing to change society for the better just like Lady Nagant believes it needs to be, seeking purpose after leaving the hero commission where Deku is going to symbolize and give that purpose back to Lady Nagant that you should explain your intel to us so we can save the world together you can have meaning in what it means to be a hero again. Now I don't want to repeat myself so make sure to watch our 30 minute long video covering why Deku will become the number one hero in the world. I'm telling you bruh my balls dip prediction quirk is going to be 100% accurate when it comes to this shit. You must hit the notification bell for our channel because we have been breaking everything down intensively weekly for you on my hero. You won't be on the same page as the rest of the community otherwise so watch the video in the pinned comment and hit the the notification bell and like the video please
Now, Lady Nagant thinks to herself that Deku's reaction to save Overhaul was so seamlessly fast that it must have been a natural reaction. Nagant recalls the lip service of the Hero Commission of how she was sold a lie to then be manipulated, used, and abused. Now, because Nagant was thrown off balance, the airwalk quirk was also deactivated. Because of this, she is falling down rapidly. We see her hand in the air as if she is reaching out just like she was reaching out to those kids in chapter 314 but she snapped it back due to the blood and dirt on her hands that she saw but unlike last time Deku doesn't let her go and grabs her hand Nagant who had rejected society rejected the hero's way went into her shell like a turtle because of the disgust and fear of reaching her hands out she has had many regrets due to the dirty bloodstained hands of hers Deku grabbing her messed up broken ass hand signifies that he is willing to fix the cracks of society and is willing to reach out to those that are misunderstood. Deku then says that the bullet she fired at Overhaul was gonna miss anyway because its trajectory was off. The first shot she took at Overhaul would have ripped through Deku's back if Nagant wasn't holding back. Would someone working for All For One do this with their original intention to actually kill someone? No! This was Lady Nagant's way of asking to be saved. He continues saying that Nagant has seen the darkest side of society so she would would know exactly where they should shine the light from atop to reform society for the better. Again, linking back to my video where I explain why Deku will be number one because he's gonna reform society for the better. He wants Nagant to fight alongside the heroes to bring down All For One and Shigaraki as she still has a heart of a hero. Nagant feels touched by Deku's words and actions. However, just when Nagant is about to call Deku a true hero, she is cut short by a crack through her face, stopping her from speaking. All for one then says how hearts can be swayed easily and this is why he made sure to have a contingency in place. When all for one gave Nagant her flying quirk he likely also inserted his quirk factor in her. As we know the quirk factor is someone's DNA that allows them to foresee through it through the vestige world. As we know all for one has that ability and unimaginable amount of quirks at his disposable to pull this contingency plan off. He's just some Someone that you cannot trust. That is how he knew when her heart had changed and her will completely differed from actually wanting to kill Deku so he decided to blow her up. All for one continues calling Nagant just a tool only being used to do stuff for others. He goes back to the message of how it was her quirk and gift that led this life of hers. And to be honest he ain't wrong you know. Lady Nagant got recruited for the hero commission because she had the overpowered sniper quirk. If she didn't have this quirk then her life wouldn't have gone down this dark path. However, a system should not be created in a way which punishes the extraordinary. This is the flawed thinking of All For One. Back in chapter 192 during the backstory of the first user, All For One said a similar thing where he was using his quirk by helping people whose quirk had only been a burden to them. However, there was a sinister plot behind it where All For One was making them his pawns through the guise of being kind in nature. Similarly, he blames the quirk Nagant was born with for her dark path but fails to understand that it was he who helped create the hero vs villain mentality for the world indirectly. It was the fear people had for him and his reign in the past which let the vigilantes form a community and become known as heroes by the people. In the end, all for one's selfish desire is what causes chaos. Nagant self-destructs and falls through Deku's hand. As she is falling looking like a crispy fried chicken, she gets saved by none other than Hawks, who comes in swiftly rescuing her and calling her senpai, knowing how it feels to be crispy fried chickens by Darby. So he, he, I'm just saying, he most likely is gonna know how to save her. So at the end of the day, Lady Nagant's character would most definitely be needed for Deku to reform society. And how else will they gain an advantage over all for one? She definitely ain't gonna die, I'm just saying that now. Anyway guys, that's everything I wanted to say for this week's My Hero Academia chapter. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and I'll see you guys next time.